Report from Santa Fe is made possible in part by grants from the members of the National Education Association of New Mexico, an organization of professionals who believe that investing in public education is an investment in our state's economic future. And by a grant from the Healy Foundation, Taos, New Mexico. Hello, I'm Lorraine Mills, and welcome to Report from Santa Fe. Our guest today is investigative reporter Greg Pallas. Thank you for joining us. Thrilled to be here again. Well, you have achieved a lot of uh, really high regard as an investigative reporter. You worked for the BBC for years, for The Guardian, really a, a, a flagship paper. The real Great paper of the, of the English language, yeah. Exactly. And now you're working for Rolling Stone. That's right. Some of your other books, I love Vulture's Picnic. That is great. <laughs> Armed Madhouse is another one. But now we are here to celebrate a book and a film called The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, a tale of billionaires and ballot bandits. And we're... We've asked you here because one of the issues of, of the campaign is now, are the elections rigged? And let's just look at a clip from your film, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. My name's Pallast, Greg Pallast. I'm an investigative reporter. I hunt billionaires who misbehave. And every four years, I become a crime reporter, the crime election theft. election thieves, vote rustlers, ballot bandits. Investigative reporter Greg Pallast wades through the dirty political tactics. just see what Mr. Donald Trump says. Let's look at it. This voting system is out of control. You have people, in my opinion, that are voting many, many times. Say what, Donald? You have people, in my opinion, that are voting many, many times. And that are voting many, many times. Many, many times. Really, Donald? A double voting crime wave. Is there really a gigantic conspiracy of one million Democrats to vote twice? Or is it a massive scheme? to take away the votes of a million innocent people. Yeah, so Trump says the election's rigged. And what I found out in my investigations, and you'll see in following me in the film, is that, yeah, it's rigged. His buddies are rigging it, his billionaire buddies. And I hunt down, I literally hunt down the billionaires at their fancy soirees in the Hamptons, at their uh, uh, multi-million dollar dinners and breakfasts with the Donald, at their uh, monster mansions, which I, which I am able to photograph using drones, FAA clearance, by the way, and um, lots of cartoons, because I like cartoons. But basically, it's a story of how they can steal this election, how in many states, 30 Republican-controlled states, they're using a system to wipe out a million voters of color. But it goes back to Trump's accusation that people are voting many, many times. When he says it's rigged, he's saying people are voting twice, People have not noticed that, but here at Rolling Stone, we have, and I investigated. It took two years, but what I found out, I got these lists that they, you know, they were trying to hide these lists, by the way. They said they were unavailable. They said, you, you know, who are, they said literally millions of people are voting twice. Well, who are these skanky, terrible, double voters? They should be in prison. You get five years for voting twice. Why aren't they arresting them? They wouldn't give me the names because, oh, it's a criminal investigation. Palace, we can't give that to you. But they did but they forgot something. I see the hat, I'm an investigative reporter. And if they say confidential, I'm gonna get the documents. I got the names and I found out who they were calling double voters and they weren't double voters, it was a different, something else was going on here. And what I found is the key to who could win this election, either not only presidential, but the Senate races too. Well, um, so, you you describe the sen there's such a sense of humor in this. I mean, this is serious government fraud. I mean, it's just horrible to think of. Yeah, and yet it's you so horrible. It's funny. Because yes. I got to make it funny. Because I if I would there's a lot of everyone who sees it laughs, cries, 
and by the way, if you don't, I'd pay for your therapy. Yeah. But the first hour of the film, two thirds of the film, it's pretty funny. And we even use Saturday morning cartoons. I got the guy who who made, uh, who drew, who framed Roger Rabbit. And we have Santa Claus explaining some of these things. That's Ed Asner in a Santa suit. Yeah. But I also have a lot of celebs coming in and out. Of course, believe it or not, under the Academy Awards, I'm categorized as a documentary, even though there's all this crazy stuff going on with cartoons and, and movie stars. But it's it, because it's all true. You're actually following me on this investigation. And so, for example, I go and hunt down these nasty, gnarly double voters, these people committing the felony crime of voting in two states in the same election. And there's, I find one woman who goes by the name of Willie May, and then there's a Willie man who's also, who's also voting. It's supposed to be the same. And they said this is the same person. So someone's voting as a man and as a woman. I got to meet this skanky guy. He turns out he's an itinerant musician, a real stoner who lives in a bus. And Let's here he is. Let's take a look at this clip. But now I know we've got one. Voted in 14 states. Once as a guy named Willie, then as a lady named Willie May. He's even got his own bus to vote in several states at once. That's him. That's him. William Nelson? You got me. William Nelson? Willie Nelson? Yes, sir. It says here, Willie May Nelson. Willie May what? Willie May Nelson voted in Georgia, and then you voted again as Willie J. Nelson. Yeah. Okay, in Mississippi. Yeah. All right, so the first time you voted as a woman, is that what, the pigtail thing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. to get, how did you get away with the beard? So you, so you have a bus, this is a good getaway vehicle. Yeah, yeah. You think you're getting away with it, you think it's cute that you're voting again and again and again. This is a felony crime. Yeah. In fact, in fact, it looks like, were you arrested before? No, I was just a little play thing we did, you know, just me and the car. Oh wait, what are you grinning for? Are you high, are you smoking something? Aren't you? <laughs> Maybe this old guy is telling the truth. Well, isn't that just marvelous? That's Willie Nelson. Yeah, no, he's really on the list. It's not made up. He's really on this list called Crosscheck, where they're saying millions of people are voting twice. So there's Willie Mae Nelson. is supposed to be the same voter as Willie H. Nelson, the country singer. They say it's the same person voting twice. And what they do is they take away the voting rights of both. Then I find, I look on the list, there's all these names like Hernandez, Rodriguez, Lee, Washington, uh, 288 people named James Brown voting in uh, in Georgia and voting in another state. And then I find, so it looks to me like it's nothing. We have experts go through the list, and you can tell the ethnic ethnicity of every last name in America through the census. And our experts say, whoa, dig it. One in seven Latinos, black people, and Asian Americans one in seven voters of color in the 30 Republican states are on the cross-check double voting suspect list. So you have a crime wave, a massive crime wave of voters of color. Are, do we really have a whole bunch of black people and Asians getting together and say, hey, how many times did you vote? Or is it a scheme to take away the votes of these uh, voters of color and and, others, and their main color, of course, is blue. They vote Democratic. I'm not a Democrat, by the way. I'm just talking about vote theft. I'm not talking about who's good and bad. You know, I'm not Santa Claus telling you who's good and bad. That's Ed Asner. He's Santa Claus. He tells you in the film who's good and bad. But we're trying to find out, so we're finding out that it's actually a, a, uh, a hit at minorities. Unless, of course, it's really true that minorities are actually scheming to steal the election. And so I, I thought this was nonsense until I actually found a woman who claimed to be Maria Isabel Hernandez, voting a second time as Maria Cristina Hernandez. And she explained how Hispanics have been planning for generations to steal our country away from us by using this common name trick of theirs. And it was a full confession, and here it is. Here's the big secret list of millions who are accused of voting twice. Look at this. Maria Isabel Hernandez is supposed to be the same voter as Maria Cristina Hernandez. What it says here is that Maria Isabel Hernandez mm -hmm. of Georgia voted a second time as Maria Cristina Hernandez mm -hmm. of Louisiana. Clearly. Is this, is this 
something Obviously. Else, do Hispanics vote consistently more than one time? Are there, are there literally hundreds, according to these documents, there are literally hundreds of thousands of Hispanics voting several times. Yeah, it's been this like big, outrageous plan that we've all been working on since childbirth to like make sure that we all had similar names so that we could vote multiple times across states. That's like been the big major plan of how we were gonna take over this country. And you're talking about Wong's, you're talking about Hernandez's, you're talking about Washington's. It's a lot of Asian folks and it's a lot of black folks and it's a lot of people who all have common names. Like the reason why we do that is specifically so we can get around these voter laws and actually vote twice. So that's like been the big major plan of how we were gonna take over this country. Wow, a full confession. Well, who is playing the role of Maria Hernandez? Well, it was really Rosario Dawson <laughs> trying to put me on, and she did a great job of it. And, uh, but she's also, by the way, the founder of a group, Voto Latino, to protect the votes of Latinos. But this is the sick stuff that's used against Latinos. And we show all kinds of other ways that they're going after Latinos. They, have, uh, they, they say that millions, according to Donald Trump, millions of Asian, of, excuse me, millions of, of Hispanic Americans are crossing the Rio Grande to vote in our elections here in New Mexico, in Arizona. I even fly down to the border. I fly down and uh, to Joe Arpaio's prison in uh. next door, Arizona, uh, which, is, which he set up to get these double voting fiends after, you know, just wet from the Rio Grande. Um, but the jails are actually empty. They couldn't find a single double voter, but they removed, guess what? They're removing the names of 100,000 Hispanics from the voter mm -hmm. rolls on grounds that they are merely suspected of voting twice. They haven't arrested anyone. It's very easy to catch someone who's voted twice because you're registered to vote and there's an address. When I got the secret list, I actually met all, I, I went and met hundreds of them. And you interviewed them I on interviewed the them. They all had yeah. a very good alibi. Like, well, I'm white and the other guy's black. How could I, yeah. <laughs> how could we do this? You see this through the film. But one of the things, you had a data expert saying um, they're not even using birthdays and Social Security numbers. No. They're just using the same name with a different middle initial, one's a junior, one's a third. So, yeah, so they don't want, okay, they're having father and son, juniors and seniors, the same guy, et cetera. We go through all this, we use cartoons, we use uh, virtual worlds. In fact, many of you will, will see that I enter the virtual world of Sin City, the cartoon, yeah. the cartoon uh, movie. Now, uh, but also I get stumped. The real question is, who's behind this? And I can't figure out who's behind this. So in the film, I fall asleep at, at a bar, which is pretty, well, that's a documentary. That's factual. That happens all the time. While I'm watching on the screen um, Law and Order at the TV bar, I fall asleep, and I finally begin to crack the case when I get help after I fall asleep. Let's look at this one. Why wipe out voters just because their name is Brown? Someone really hates people with common names and will do anything to make sure they can't vote. So I, I know that most black people... Interstate cross-check program from Kansas. Why Kansas? Okay, Sherlock, tell me about this list. It's not a list of double voters, is it, Palace? It's just a giant list of common names. Real common. Why Jackson? Why Wong? Why Hernandez? Why? So you're trying to tell us that they hate them enough to spend millions to write them off the voter rolls? Really, man? So where do I go now? It says Kansas, Dorothy. Kansas. So hit the yellow brick road, Toto. Well, and then where, where does that take you? Where does that take me? To Kansas, Dorothy, Kansas. And Kansas is where we have Donald Trump's number one advisor on building the wall and making Mexico pay for it. The voting chief of Kansas, the Secretary of Can State of Kansas, a guy named Chris Kobach, and I go jump him. He won't meet with me because I want to show him his list and say, who's behind you? Why are you doing this? And do you know that this is just basically a racist purge sheet. I mean, instead of using, it's like the Ku Klux Klan, except instead of using white sheets to scare away voters of color, they're using spreadsheets. I want to show him. So what I do is, I, he won't speak to me uh, privately in his office, so I find out he's having an ice cream social 
in a park in Wichita, public park, I fly in a war cameraman from the war zones of Afghanistan, so we know how to do this, to jump this Republican official mm. and confront him. And, uh, and that's, that's another part of the film. Well, there's, we're speaking today with Greg Pellis about his wonderful film called The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. You've been uh, described as kind of pulp nonfiction instead of pulp fiction. And the way that you use music and, and comics and, uh, and these ambush interviews that are so interesting. Yeah. Well, one of the things I do, first of all, before I was an investigative reporter, I was a, a real-life detective investigator. In fact... I was an investigator for the state of New Mexico for a while, investigating some of your billionaires involved in the oil, gas, and uranium industries. Believe me, that was probably some of the... I've been all over the world. I've been to the Congo. I've been to the Caspian Sea. I've been in war zones. But New Mexico is one of the scariest places I've ever worked in until, by the way, your attorney general paid me to leave the state. I kid you not. So I became a, 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 an investigative reporter, but I wanted to make a film that I would see. And I like cartoons, I like movie stars, I like Rosario Dawson, I like Santa Claus. So I have all these elements in what is normally, what is technically, officially a documentary. But the important thing is I'm giving you real investigative reporting. And in fact, like you say, we do do these unusual things. I do something that's not done by American newsmen anymore. I jump my targets. In other words, if some guy, some billionaire, we found billionaires behind these vote-thieving schemes who are funding this game. And I wanted to confront them, get the information from them. You know, for example, there's a guy named JP in the film, okay? Now, Trump plays a billionaire on television, but he doesn't have a billion. So behind him are real billionaires led by a guy named JP, as everyone calls him, or John Paulson, the foreclosure king. He's the guy who made $5 mm. billion dollars off helping push the mortgage market over a cliff. Every time a family in America lost their home to foreclosure, he personally made $1,000. Like that? You, go, you lose your home, he makes $1,000. Millions of homes, he makes $5 billion. Now, I wanted to confront this guy, including his connection to Trump, including his connection to vote chicanery. So what do I do? You see the hat. I have other hats. Uh, my sidekick, Ms. Badpenny, that's her real name, sewed a camera into the hat. Um, and uh, I'm wearing uh, all kinds of special sound equipment. I have Confederates placed in a crowd, and we take off in a speedboat, so it looks like we look like we should be with the billionaire crowd, mm -hmm. and we show up at a um, Hampton soiree in the, in the Hamptons with the ultra-rich, and then I get my man and confront him. You'll, in fact, in the film, you see me finally yanked away by a strange little bald man who is Mike Milken, the convicted bank yeah. fraudster who um, knows, who recognizes me right away and, and, and pulls me away. But we get our information, and that's the important thing, and that's what I want to do is show you that with real investigative reporting, you can get the real story. And it could be very fun, but ultimately the, the story is also heartbreaking because it's the end of American democracy unless we do something about it. So what you uncovered in this, because you for many elections you've been working at the various hanging chads and all these other things. But this case is something called cross-check. Yes. And how many states have signed on to it? We've had 30 states, Republican-controlled states. And again, look, I'm the first one to say, because I've investigated vote and election rigging by Democrats. Yes, both parties do it. But right now, we've got an accusation by Mr. Trump that the Democrats are rigging this election, and he's... He's a pro at what's called gaslighting. He's doing, he's committing hanky-panky, and he's making you think you're doing it. He accuses you because he's doing it. His guys are doing it. Now, Trump himself is not ordering this. He's not that bright of a bulb. There are big shots who really know their stuff, like that official in Kansas, who, by the way, went to Yale, Harvard, and Oxford. You get to meet this character. And when I jump him, by the way, I have one of those microphones with the little cube on it that says yeah. four, has the number four. Well... That's how I'd look like a, no, a local newsman, but I couldn't lie. So I actually got Channel 4 of London, England to agree to hire me to do that jump. So it was a real, a real number four, and, but when I got to him and he realized who I was, he tried to run away, but he's still trying to eat his ice cream. So it's, um, you know, while he's trying to get away from the evidence that I'm throwing in his face, 
that he's literally stealing away a million votes from voters of color in this election. And that's a story that I have to get you because, and do it in a way that's just not done by U.S. newsmen. They don't chase down their targets. If someone says you can't get a document because it's confidential, I get it anyway. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? If it's confidential, it's what you, that's the one you want. You know, that's obvious to me. Not easy. Don't do it at home, by the way. Yes. Uh, now, I'm happy. I was happy to hear that New Mexico is not among the, the states that do this cross-check. That's right. But New Mexico has gotten involved in all kinds of other nonsense, and including we have something called provisional ballots. These are like what I call placebo ballots because it's very yeah. easy not to get counted. So your name's not on the voter roll. They said, don't worry, fill this out, this, this provisional ballot in the garbage. We call that, we have a long cartoon in, we have a long cartoon in the uh, film uh, about votes that are spoiled. You know mm -hmm. that two million votes are spoiled in America. What is it in every presidential election? Officially, that's the official count of the votes that are not counted. And you don't spoil a vote by leaving it out of the fridge. We show this yeah. in a cartoon, but the whole point is it may be funny, but it's also tragic. We literally throw two million votes in the garbage can. And by the way, whose votes? I went into the dumpster, virtually, go into the dumpster, and it turns out that if you are black, the chance your vote is going to be left out to spoil and not counted is 900% higher than if you're white. And we show this in the film, and we show the obstacle course that black and Latino voters have to go to to make their vote count. And it's, but it's a lot of fun. Well, it's a lot of fun, but like you say, you're laughing to keep from crying because it is our democracy, the best democracy money can buy, that we're watching, you know, be uh, cannibalized in a way. Well, you know, I wrote, first wrote the book, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, almost 12 years ago. It was, it was number one in uh, New Mexico for almost a year. And so now this is the sequel. And I, it, in a way, it kind of makes me sick that I have to do the sequel. Why am I making this movie? Why, 12 years after what happened in Florida? So, so I'm the reporter who discovered that Catherine Harris and Jeb Bush removed thousands of voters from the voter rolls before the 2000 election. It was 56,000 black men, and they called them ex-cons. They said they were convicted felons and murderers and and you know father rapers and mother stabbers, and in fact, every single one was was innocent of any crime except voting while black. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a tough, tragic story. So why, how do I tell it in the film? Because I have to give you a little history. I make a Saturday morning cartoon out of it. Mm -hmm. Like I say, the guy who did Who Framed Roger Rabbit drew this for me. So it's a Saturday morning cartoon about Catherine Harris and Jeb Bush. So you're laughing, but believe me, you also know that it's just gut-wrenching sick. And now we're doing it, now we're back 14, 16 years later with new games. And I'm getting tired of it. In the meantime, I talked to you about other other games that I saw played in in other states. And um, like, for example, we have Bobby Kennedy in there, who plays himself, who is himself in there. And he's he and I worked with Rolling Stone. You Bobby know. Kennedy Jr. Bobby Kennedy Jr. Of <laughs> yeah. course, his, unfortunately, his father was assassinated. Yeah. Yes. And um, he's a tremendous voting rights lawyer and investigator. And so we investigated together and found something called caging, in which you'll love this. In, it's in the film. The Republican Party sends, I get these inside documents. By the way, you know how I get them? I had a friend who set up a fake website called georgebush.org. And so the georgebush.com campaign started accidentally sending all of Carl Rove's confidential emails to my friend's server. And he turned them over to me. He says, I don't know what this stuff is. But it is looks pretty nasty, and it says confidential. And whenever they put confidential on it, believe me, they're not trying to keep a surprise for you that's a good surprise for Christmas. They want to keep it from the public eyes. And what it turned out to be was a list of voters that they sent mail to. And if the voter wasn't home, they take them off the voter rolls. Now, who wasn't home? Black students away at college at, uh, vacations. Um, homeless people who aren't home because they don't have a home. And you'll love this. Soldiers, soldiers of color sent off to Iraq and Afghanistan. They'd send them a letter to their home voting address, which you're allowed to vote from Iraq if you're in the army, um, absentee, right? Yeah. But they said, oh, they don't exist. So they literally took away soldiers' 
votes. And we go through this. We go through the numbers through, with cartoons, with illustrations. Some of it's very funny. And then we go jump the bad guys. And the film takes you from the heart of the Congo. I go up the Amazon River. And then the film, uh, you've seen it, so you know, it starts out with I'm in the carcass of a whale, a carcass of a whale, in the Arctic. So I'm actually above the Arctic Circle inside the carcass of a whale with an Eskimo screaming at me in words we cannot use on a public TV station. But what's that all about? Why am I there on a hunt of vote theft? Because I want to find out why they're stealing the votes. And we have a little story about some a group of characters called the Brothers Coke. And we find out their connection to the death of the whales in the Arctic, to the XL pipeline, and to Hugo Chavez of Caracas, and you see me down there. Hugo's singing a, a tango, wearing my hat, by the way. It's by, by the way, if you didn't catch the Spanish, he was singing, uh, Hugo Chavez was singing about the, uh, a lonely detective. I want you to be able to say um, what we can do. Uh, you know, it's one thing now I'm finally aware of Well, I, I think the most important thing you can do is get a comic book. I'm giving away a free comic book at my site, gregpalace.com. It's the best democracy money can buy comic book about cross-check. And I want you to laugh, and then I want you to protect your vote and protect other people's vote. And by the way, the first thing you can do, you don't have to worry in New Mexico, but, I, well, other things in New Mexico, check your voter registration. I know you've been voting the same place 20 times. Well, forget about it, Jack. You can still get your vote and your registration wiped away. Don't take a chance, okay? If you read... The book, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, which goes with the film, at the back we have a whole seven ways to beat the ballot bandits. I call it the ballot condom because it allows for safe voting. And that you want to get that information. So the number one thing is to unstupid yourself, get the comic book, read the book, and catch the film, pass it on. But understand, we are still, and you'll see in the film, this, this important moment. Together, we still have to keep walking over those bridges just like Martin Luther King did 50 years ago. We're not done with this voting rights movement. No. We've I'm... just begun to march now. So that's what I'd like to do. Read the book and march with me. Yes. Um, and the book is The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. I'm so happy that we've had you as our guest today. Greg Pallas, thank you for joining us. It's a thrill. And I'm Lorene Mills. I'd like to thank you, our audience, for being with us today on Report from Santa Fe. We'll see you next week. Past archival programs of Report from Santa Fe are available at the website reportfromsantafe.com. If you have questions or comments, please email info at reportfromsantafe.com. Report from Santa Fe is made possible in part by grants from the members of the National Education Association of New Mexico, an organization of professionals who believe that investing in public education is an investment in our state's economic future, and by a grant from the Healy Foundation, Taos, New Mexico.